Okay, now let's look at an example from chapter 11. Um, this is number 19. You take a quiz with six multiple choice questions. After you studied, you estimated that you would have about an 80% chance of getting any individual question right. So what are your chances of getting them all right? Use at least 20 trials. Well, um, to model this, uh, I'm going to suggest that um, our components should be a single multiple choice question, right or wrong. And we could use single random digits, 0 to 9, to model the outcome. There are 10 of these here, and remember we have an 80% chance of getting it right. So I'm going to take 8 of those numbers and count that as correct. And the other 2 will mean incorrect. Um, a trial is going to be 6 random digits at a time because that's going to represent the 6 questions on the test. The response variable will be the number of questions answered correctly. So the number of digits between 0 and 7. The statistic that I'm going to take is the ratio of perfect scores to the total number of trials. And that will tell us the likelihood of acing the test. So here's what this is going to look like. Um, let me set this up real quick. Okay. Now, I want to generate random numbers on my calculator to do this. You could also use a random number table. And this randint function from 0 to 9 is going to give me a random integer between 0 and 9. So I got a 4 and a 2, a 1, 8, 8, and 5. Okay, how do we interpret this? What are our component outcomes? I'm going to use C and I to represent correct and incorrect. Now remember uh, we said that 0 through 7 would be correct and 8 or 9 is incorrect. So correct, 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 incorrect, incorrect, correct. Okay, how many of those were correct? There were four. Okay, so I also don't have to generate these random integers one at a time. If I use that same randint function, and I ask for 0 to 9 six times, it'll give me six random integers at once, and I can use this to represent an entire trial. That'll save me a little bit of time here. Okay, I kind of got on a roll there entering my um, component outcomes. So I just went through and, and entered all of those random digits before analyzing even, even the trial outcome. Now you can um, do whatever works best for you uh, to make this random number generation go quicker and entering it into your table. Um, just make sure that you do the first one right here so that you make sure the, um, the simulation that you set up makes sense. Okay, and then from there, you just do what, what works best for you, how, however you can do it quickly and efficiently. All right. Now I've uh, taken a closer look at my component outcomes and it only remains to go through and count um, how many of these were correct. All right. Now, out of all 22 trials that I did, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I had 5 out of 22 um,
perfect scores on the test. So that means my simulation suggests that I have about a 22.7% chance of acing this test given um, the original parameters of this problem here, that I have an 80% chance of getting any individual question right. Let's look at this other example then. So a friend of yours who took the multiple choice quiz we just looked at got all six questions right and now claims to have guessed blindly on every question. If each question offered four possible answers, do you believe her? Explain basing your argument on a simulation involving at least 10 trials. Okay, so here's how this one looks. We need to set things up from the components. We need to start from the bottom. Okay, so a component here is going to be a single multiple choice question, right or wrong. Four possible answers per question means there's a 25% chance of guessing correctly. So we'll use a single random integer between 1 and 4 to model the outcome of a guess. 1 means it was correct and anything else means incorrect. Now, what does a trial look like here? It's the same thing again because there are six um, questions on the test. So we're going to generate six of these random numbers, 1 to 4, each representing um, the whether or not we got the question right on the test. Now, what's the response variable? This is a little bit different um, angle than we took before. Did we ace the test, yes or no? Okay, and what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take the ratio of all of the perfect scores to the total number of trials, and that'll tell us the likelihood of acing the test. Now, this isn't the only way to set up this simulation, but now that I've laid it all out here, I can um, run the simulation and I could expect someone else to sort of follow this recipe and with enough with enough trials they would get the same number or close to the number that I get. So I'm gonna delete this stuff. And let's model this. So we've got um, six components per trial and I'm gonna do rand int again. But this time I'm going to say from 1 to 4 and 6 at a time. Okay, that gave me a 232422. Two, two. Okay, I did 12 trials here, and the trial outcomes for all of these are no. We did not ace the test, right? I didn't see 111111 pop up anywhere here, so that means that there was not a single case in 12 tries where we, we aced the test. So the way that we would answer this question is to say that um, it is very unlikely that this person guessed on every question on the test and aced it. According to my simulation, the chances of that happening are zero, though I think that the actual chances of that happening are not zero. So if I wanted to get a good estimate of that probability, I would have to run way more trials. But um, at this point, I'm willing to say that that person is full of it, and they did not guess on every question on the test and ace it.